Here is our setup in the hood for demonstrating the equilibrium of bromine between a liquid and vapor. We always work with a bottle of sodium thiosulfate nearby in case of any breakage of the glass because the sodium thiosulfate will help neutralize the bromine. I'm going to add dry ice to the beaker. As you can see, the starting color we have is orange within the tube. And now you can see how it will change once it is pulled down. So here we have two tubes containing equilibrium of N2O4 and NO2 gas. We are going to be taking these tubes and lowering one into a hot water bath and then the other into a beaker I will fill with dry ice. When I do this, it will show the shift in equilibrium. The hot water bath will cause the gas, which is currently brown, to favor the NO2 gas side of equilibrium. It should then become darker. When I place this tube into dry ice, it will favor the N2O4 side of the equilibrium, and we should see the gas, which is currently brown as well, start to become lighter. So here I have a tube containing hexaqua cobalt cation. And I'm going to take this, and you can see it has a very nice bright pink color. I'm going to add it to my hot water bath, which is at about 85 degrees Celsius. And as you see, we will start to see a color change. It is starting to go blue. Now I'm going to take this and immediately add it to an ice water bath. And as you can already see, we are starting to get pink to come back into the solution. Now I am going to add calcium chloride into propanol to my solution. I am just adding dropwise. And as you see now, you can see a bilayer where we have pink on bottom and blue on top. Now I'm going to be adding distilled water. And again, I am just adding dropwise. Now I will be adding one and a half milliliters of calcium chloride into propanol back to solution. You can see our blue bilayer again. Now I have tetrachlorocobalt anion. I have added four mils of that to this test tube. And with it now, I am going to add drops of distilled water. And as you see, we can see a blue and pink bilayer. As I now shake this, it goes completely pink. I'll add just a little bit more to make sure that it is entirely pink. Now I am adding one and a half milliliters of calcium chloride back into solution. As you see, solution is now mostly blue. I'm going to take this and add it to my ice bath. This is our solution after the water bath. You can see there is somewhat more pink in the solution, but we still have some blue up top. Now I'm adding it to our hot water bath. And as you see, after our hot water bath, the solution is primarily blue. So as we have our tetrachloro complex, where you see the blue bilayer up top, pink bilayer on bottom, we were not able to get it cold enough in the ice water bath to create a totally pink solution. So instead, I'm going to try putting dry ice into the beaker. So now I have a dry ice bath, and we will see if this is able to get the temperature low enough to create the totally pink 
hexa acor complex. And now as we see, we have gotten the pink hexa acor complex out using a dry ice bath. Now I can take this, place it into our hot water bath. As you see, almost immediately we start to get our blue tetrachloro complex back. As you can see, after it's sat in the ice water bath, we're back to our blue tetrachloro cobalt. So here I have a solution that is 8 mils of the hexa aqua cobalt cation. I am now going to be adding calcium chloride dropwise until my solution is a violet or purple color. The solution has darkened slightly from pink to more of a purple. I'm going to be taking 8 milliliters of this mixture and dividing it into two test tubes. Then I'm going to be taking one solution and putting it into my hot water bath. The other is going to be going into an ice bath. As you can see, we have a very dark blue solution. We have a slightly in between darker pink and a lighter pink. Now I'm going to take these two solutions, I'm going to combine them, and now we have a very good purple solution. I'm going to take this solution, place it into my hot water bath, Is my solution out of the hot water bath. I'm only going to be putting half of the solution into the ice bath. As you can see already, we're starting to get pink forming on the bottom. Even more has formed. And now we have a perfect half and half solution. Now we are doing part four of reversible and irreversible reactions. In this part, You'll be taking your solutions of cobalt and you'll be using the Spectronic 20 to measure absorbance. Instructions on how to use the Spectronic 20 are posted on canvas. We will need to have our solutions made in a cuvette. And next, I will show you how to prepare all of your solutions. Now in this part, I'm going to show you how to prepare your solutions to measure absorbance with in cuvettes. So to start, our first solution is going to be our blank right from the start as you see our cuvette. In our cuvette we have a frosted portion which means it is opaque up top. There is a natural line that ends right here. When we fill our cuvettes we want to fill to about that line or just slightly below or in total about three quarters of the cuvette. For our blank we are just going to be using deionized water and I am just going to fill and I have filled the cuvette to just below our line. Our next solution is going to be our tetrachloro cobalt anion. It is too concentrated as it stands, so we need to take it and dilute it down in order to measure absorbance. I will pour out some of our cobalt into my beaker here. Then I will need to dilute it using my isopropanol or 2-propanol. Our dilution is going to be 10 parts isopropanol with one part of our cobalt complex. Now I have my 10 milliliters of isopropanol. Here I have my beaker that I will end us mixing in. So I'll take one milliliter from here, transfer it to my beaker, dilute with my 10 mils of isopropanol, swirl in order to mix. And as you can see, the colors of the solutions, our original solution is a very dark, deep blue or violet. Our diluted solution is a nice light blue. I will take that, pour into our cuvette, And then we are done with this solution. As I said before, our dilution that we performed here was an 11 to 1 dilution in the end because we used 10 parts isopropanol, 1 part tetrachlorocobalt. Next, we are going to need our hexa aqua cobalt complex. This one we do not need to dilute, so I simply need to add some to my beaker and then pour into my cuvette. For the last solution, we're going to be making a mixture of our 
hexa aqua cobalt and our dilute tetrachloro cobalt. I'll be needing three milliliters from each of these solutions. So now that I've added three milliliters of each, I can swirl to combine them. And as you see, we now have a very light purple. To make sure that they are fully mixed, I'm just going to stir with my glass rod. And now I can take and add my mixture to my final cuvette. And now we have all of the solutions that we need to measure our absorbance. Now that we are back at our Spectronic 20, we can take our four solutions, our blank of distilled water, dilute tetrachloro cobalt, our hexa aqua cobalt, and our mixture. As you can see, all their different colors. We will take and measure the absorbance using our Spectronic 20.